Cody Don here. Welcome back to Chicken Hole Base. As you can see, today I have my truck and I'm arriving in the daylight for once. Well, that's nice. You can actually see everything now. Uh, I fixed the exhaust leak on my truck, so I'm not too worried about it starting to fire anymore. And it's definitely nice because I don't have to straddle the ruts. I can drive much faster up here. But anyway, let me park this. I've also got my birds again. They go pretty much everywhere with me these days. Hey guys. Come on. Well, the birds are situated. It's time for me to suit up and get to work. So what am I doing in this episode? Well, first of all, I had a bunch of stuff that I was using the truck to deliver, such as this compost bin. We'll talk more about that later. Got some wooden sticks, some tools, a can of gas, which might stay with the truck, a little uh, dump cart for moving dirt around and stuff. Might come in handy. Tape measure, which I'll be using very shortly. And if I come over here, some jugs of water. I'll probably hide these somewhere around, just so I've got a little bit of water up here, in case I need it. Which, you know, usually you do. Uh, unfortunately, I did get here just before sunset. If we have a look over that way, you can see the sun setting. Kind of pretty. <laughs> Well, I've got some light left. Let's uh, first zoom out the camera, have a wander around, uh, have a look at things, and maybe we'll take a few quick measurements. Oh no! The chicken hole's been damaged. A piece broke off. Look at this. Right there. I wonder what caused that. Maybe I could glue it back on. Should I try to fix it? I probably could. So the general idea of what I'm thinking is to dig a tunnel into the ground under where I'm standing here, and that'll be the living area, you know, like the bedroom, maybe the kitchen, and I'll have a tunnel going out between these two trees right there and then link that up with those big plastic tanks, which I'll be using for greenhouses, down over there. And we have the big one positioned north to south, so we get some maximum sun exposure. And then I can kind of fill in a lot of this space with those grow tunnels I was been talking about. Of course, we probably won't get that far this year. And maybe I can put some tanks of water over here somewhere. For thermal storage and uh, as for solar power and water collection I'll probably put all that stuff up there. Okay birds, it ain't gonna hurt you. I'll stash that right there by this tree for now. If you haven't already gathered, this is what I plan to use to dispose of my waste. Humanure composting. Probably get a couple more of these and have an entire room dedicated to compost in the base. For now though, I can just have one sitting out like this. Since I'm likely to be using this very soon, I'm gonna throw in a bucket of activated biochar. So this is gonna be my bacteria starter and also the charcoal adds a lot of surface area for the oxygen to get in. And it also absorbs smells. So, tip that in and I've also freed up my bucket. Come on birds.
Come on. Come on, chickies. Come on. Let's go. Okay, here we are. It's uh, now morning. I did end up sleeping in my armor. <laughs> uh, it's actually quite comfortable. Uh, you know, it's like a weighted blanket. It kind of, it's kind of nice. Also, it's rather warm. The metal reflects infrared light back at me, so it's like being wrapped in one of those space blanket things. Uh, I can't sleep on my side though. It's uh, kind of uncomfortable the weight squishing you like that. I can hear the birds are up. I think they got quiet now that I started talking, but... Ugh. I also moved the truck over here up against the cliff face. For some reason that felt more comfortable. I did spend a little bit of time last night uh, working on the uh, maps and stuff. Let's see here. Yeah, so this is the uh, some of the numbers I took down for the measurements. You can see, use these two trees right here. This is doesn't have any numbers on it, but it's all to scale. Uh, each square is five feet. So the reason I made this little scale drawing was so that I could play around with some paper cutouts of the major components of the base, so I can figure out how everything's going to be arranged. So, for instance, this is the two big plastic tanks that are going to be bolted together into a 24-foot greenhouse. This is a walkway tunnel. Here's one of the smaller tanks. And the current plan is to drive a tunnel up into the side of this cliff, so kind of like about that far, and then dig out a small room about like that. So that'll be my bedroom. From there I could branch off with some additional tunnels and rooms, but I haven't really got any of that planned yet. I think I'm going to run this tunnel actually behind that tree there. We might even go up right next to the cliff, but for now, let's plan on it being there. The main airlock will go right around there. Here's that medium-sized tank. I think I'm going to use this for the secondary airlock on the greenhouse. And this will also be where that walkway tunnel connects to. Well, it might connect to something up there, but we'll just run it to there for now. There's the, the big greenhouse, a little leg tank there, connecting it to this 3,400 gallon tank. And I've actually got one more of those big 5,000 gallon plastic tanks. And I think the third one I'm going to put up actually on the hillside. So these are down low on this flat plane. And then these tanks here, I'm going to step it up so this one will be physically higher. The idea there is the sun will warm these up, creating lots of warm, moist air, and that warm air is going to want to rise to the highest point. From there, I'll duct the air to a tank full of water, where the air will run through some copper tubing to transfer its heat into the water. The cool air will then be transferred down either to here or maybe to here, and that'll create a circulation, which will naturally occur. So it'll be kind of like its own weather system. It'll be nice to keep everything stirred so as to not create any locations where CO2 might build up. I'm of course going to have some additional fans to move the air, but I'd like everything to kind of function without any mechanical input. I'm not sure where I'm going to put this tank, probably up on the hill a little bit. And as the air goes through this tank, it'll condense water. I can take that water and use it for drinking cleaning, though most of it will be going back to the plants. And as for those grow tunnels I've been talking about, those will probably go around here somewhere, run out another walkway, kind of like that, to service them all. These are of course going to be the majority of my grow space, growing things like uh, wheat, but I've talked about that a little bit, and I'll talk about it more in the future. Uh, two airlocks, and maybe a, an escape hatch over here, and over here, you know, so I've got plenty of exits, in case of an emergency, you know, that sort of thing. So this will be up high, this is down low, actually this will be underground, these will be partially buried, and these will be completely unshielded. So yeah, that's pretty much what I'm thinking right now. This is, of course, subject to change, but that's kind of the layout of the base. 
Now I've realized that birds get up early in the morning, and I think that's because the uh, grasshoppers and stuff are slow, because they're cold. So of course if the birds are active then, they'll get more food. See like this cricket here. You'd never be able to catch them just like that in the middle of the day. Anyway, I wanted to see where the shadow ends up. Uh, you know, which places gets most sunlight in the morning. Looks like this whole thing here is pretty shady. So it might be better in terms of sunlight if I actually set up over there in the middle of the field. But I do want to be up against this hill so I can dig into it. And really, the shadow does seem to be shrinking quite rapidly. I think the difference is maybe only about 20 minutes worth of sunlight. And also, in the winter, the sun will be rising over there. So this hill won't come into account much at all. I think the greenhouse and the living area are going to be done as two separate projects. Maybe the tunnel linking them together will be a project for next year. Well, before it gets too hot, I say we do at least a little bit of digging. I want to see how difficult this rock is to dig through with hand tools. So, let's do the first picking. This rock breaks pretty easily, actually. It's not that tough. I mean, it is going to require a bit of effort to go through, but you know, I won't need dynamite or anything. I might need something a little bit bigger than this hand pick, though. So let's switch that out. There we go. Now we can dig. <laughs> that seems to work. I'm exhausted already. You can see the sweat dripping off me. I probably ought to get some uh, remote controlled or autonomous robots that can dig for me that don't need to be encumbered by a heavy suit. <sighs> Let's, uh, shovel the rest of this up now. Oh. I managed to fill up one cartload. I know right where to dump this. I am probably going to need to put a culvert in here at some point, but there's a little bit of dirt to make the hole not as severe. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed. I'll see you next time.